Hey guys, my name is Aaron from Geeky Lemon Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning all about AdMob interstitial ads within the Swift language. Now before we jump straight into this, if you enjoy this tutorial and want to further your knowledge and learning ability, why not enroll in one of the many courses we have available on iOS development. All links for these will be down below in the description. But let's jump straight in to the tutorial. In our previous lecture, we learned all about how we can start generating money by displaying AdMob advertising banners directly within our applications. What we did is we set up our very own AdMob profile on the AdMob website. We downloaded the Google Mobs SDK and imported its own external framework directly within our project. And we've now got it all set up where it's now displaying a test ad directly from Google. How cool is this? So in this lecture, we're going to talk about the next way in which we can generate money from Google AdMob advertisements, and that is what's known as interstitial ads. Now, if you ever used an application and all of a sudden, bam, full screen pops up an ad. You can't do nothing about it. You've got to wait to either the five second countdown or you've got to press a little X in the top left hand or right hand corner. That's an interstitial ad. And they generate more money than AdMob banners because you know, they're, they're much higher media. They go full screen application. They're more likely to get the user's attention than just a simple standard banner. And we can learn how we can implement this in this lecture. So we're continuing from our previous lecture where we implemented in the banners. And if you haven't checked that out, I highly recommend doing so because there's some configurations we did in that lecture that are going to apply for this lecture. The main one is that we need to import the Google Mobile Ads Framework and import it at the top of our class. So if you've already done that already, we're going to head back over to the AdMob website where we've already created our banner ad for our application. So click, oh, when we, once we're on our ad units here, we're going to add in a brand new ad unit for our application now. And we're going to choose to use the interstitial section or the kind of template. So this is a full page ad format that appears at natural breaks and transitions such as level completion. So it just kind of gives you an idea of where you want to start implementing it. So if you finish the level of the game, throw up an interstitial ad. Maybe your users, you know, finish watching a video, throw up an interstitial ad. So it just comes in natural breaks. So we're going to select this then, and we're going to give it a simple name then. So I'll just call it our interstitial. There we go. Just making sure I get it spelt correctly. There we go. So interstitial, and again, we can also have some advanced features for this. So I would recommend just leaving everything by default, making sure that we got both the ad types selected. So we got text, image, rich media, and video, just so we can maximize the amount of revenue that can be generated, and then simply create that ad unit. So once we create it, just like the banner ad, we get our very own ID, which is linked specifically for the interstitial ad. So you have a different one for the banner and you'll have a different one for the interstitial, just so you can reference the two for ones, see which one's earning the most money. And again, because we've got these ad unit IDs linked into our project, then they'll start generating money in our account when we start displaying the ads. So if you haven't already, click on the ability to download the Google Mobile Ads STK guide and then click on the download section just here in manual download to download the framework. Once you've got that, if you haven't already, Im import it into our project and then simply import it into the class. But what we want to focus on in here though, if I quickly go back uh, here and we're going to go to this section, we'll do it manually again. So go to our Google Mobile Ads SDK guide and go to the interstitial section of the guide where we can learn more about it. More importantly, we want to get the kind of test uh, ad unit ID that we can use to display within the application. So once the page loads up, then if I scroll down just a little bit, we should have just here the um, ad unit ID test that we're going to be displaying within the application. So only use this for testing purposes. If you do go to use interstitial ads, make sure that you eventually, when you submit the application to the App Store, that you have your own ad unit ID hooked up and linked in, which we can get from this page. So just for testing purposes, we're going to be using this kind of ID for now. So the first we need to do then, as you see here, we need to import our Google mobile ads and we need to create a variable known as interstitial and link it to a GAD interstitial uh, kind of format there and then hook that up to an ad unit ID. So before we do any of that, then we first need to create some form of trigger object to display our interstitial ads. Now, because 
these get triggered. These are very different from banners. Banners are just there. They display. You constantly see them. But interstitial ad appears at a certain time whenever you want it to. So we're going to simply go to our main storyboard for now. And what I'll do, I'll drag and drop a simple button in. Now, all we're going to use for the button is it to be a trigger object that we can press to display an interstitial ad. So if I drag this over now, space it out, make it a little bit bigger. Now, simply say show and add. There we go. So if you press, every time we press this button, we're going to make an interstitial ad then appear. So this is so you can basically see where you would put the trigger kind of code and then implement it wherever you want it to be in your own applications. So I'm going to bring up the assistant editor now. I'll scroll down to the bottom where we've got action section. Control click or right click and drag our button over. And I simply call it um, show. There we go. Our interstitial. Now I've got to make sure I spell this correctly. There we go. Show interstitial, put a little lowercase on the S there, and then connect that up. So once we've got the trigger object, the button now added in, we'll go back to our standard editor and then jump straight into our view controller.swift. So first things first, then we need to create a variable for our interstitial ad. So we type in VAR, which is short for variable, all lowercase, and I simply call it our interstitial. There we go. And we're simply going to have this now hooked up and linked to a GAD interstitial add there and end that with our exclamation mark. So now I can reference the interstitial anywhere in this project and we now know it's hooked up to the interstitial kind of formatted add. So in the view did load then what we're actually going to get set up now is have our interstitial add now hooked up to an add unit ID. So if I go back to our kind of online guide here you can see we need the interstitial hooked up to the GAD interstitial with the add unit ID. And now this one already contains the test unit ID inside of it. So we can simply copy this and paste that inside of our project there in the view did load. Now this section here, this is the test unit ID. When you eventually submit your application to the app store, I can't stress this enough. This is where you add in your actual ID that got generated when you created the ad, which would be this one. So make sure you add that in them. Video app, well, it's actually this one here. That is your interstitial add ID. That's your application ID just there. If you get confused to where they are, you simply press the done button and you can see the both the add unit IDs underneath each section. So there's the banner one and then that's simply the interstitial one. So just simply take those when you need them. You can simply copy the add unit ID there. So no matter when you eventually submit to App Store, copy this and then paste it there. Replace both of them with your actual real ones. So once we got that in them, pretty much now all hooked up ready to go we want to create the request to then display it to the user so we'll set the request up first then and what this is then going to do and we create a let and we call it request so what it's going to do is create the request get it ready to load so when we press the button it's pretty much good to go so our request here is going to equal our GAD request in our two brackets there and we reference our interstitial and this is going to then do dot load a request and the request it's going to load is our request just up above so that's going to get it pretty much all ready to go all we got to do then is press our button which is going to be the trigger object uh, to load up our ad so we first need to check then if there is an ad available because there's no point trying to show the interstitial ad if there's not one available at that current time so we can create an if statement here and do our two brackets and inside of them we can say if our interstitial is well dot is ready so if it is ready then perform what we place within these brackets here and what we wanted to do then is to get it and present it to the user so we create our interstitial here and we do dot present and what we're going to present in from the root view controller is itself and then we end that with a bracket so that then presents it to the user and then we display and see the ad in all its glory it's pretty cool isn't it so let's go to build and run them and let's test this out and let's see it actually happen directly in front of our eyes so we have a little warning in the project and all that warning is is the fact that we didn't add any constraints to the button in the interface builder so don't worry about that too much so if i press my button now there we go we have a interstitial test ad load up directly within our application how cool is that and if i press the little x button now it then dismisses it and returns us back to the application but if I press it again now then, nothing actually happens. That's because it got loaded up within our view controller, it's ready, it got presented, 
It's now done. So how do I generate another ad in the background ready to display for a second time? Well, what we're going to do then, we're going to create another function. So after this function for our button, we're going to create a brand new function separate from it, which every time we press our button, this function will get called upon to load up a secondary ad in the background that's going to be waiting for us. So we type in function, which is short for function, and I'll call it create ad. Now this create ad here function is going to be linked now to our dash more than symbol interstitial. There we go. Can I simply find it? GAD, oh there it is, right in front of my eyes, there we go, our GAD interstitial, create our parentheses brackets and press enter. So what this is going to do is pretty much the same as what gets set up within our view did load. We create a let and we call it inter, which is short for interstitial. And this is going to go on to equal our GAD interstitial again. Let me do a bracket for our add unit ID and in the string here, we're going to copy in there, if you go to our debug area, we're going to copy in the same ID that's used within the view uh, did load, which is our test ID, and paste it in there as well. And then we end that there with a bracket. We then reference the inter just up above, then we do dot to load a request, which is going to load up inside of it our GAD request. There we go. We end that there with our two brackets. And then we're going to return space our inter. There we go. So this is going to get called when we interact with this button. So the, if it is one available ready, display it to our user. And at the same time it displays it to our user, we're going to call upon our interstitial to then equal our create add function down below. So our interstitial add now equals this function down below, which loads up another request ready to display in the background when we press our button for a second time. That's how you can generate a second interstitial add and get it ready to display to the user at any point you want. So we're just constantly generating ads in the background, ready to be triggered at any given time. So once the application loads up, if I press it for the first time, it displays that ad like normal. But when that happened, it triggered this function down below to load another one up in the background. So if I press it a second time, we now have a second ad to display. How cool is that? So if you do add in your own add unit ID. If you only just created the interstitial ad on the AdMob platform, uh, just let you know, you may have to wait 20 to 30 minutes before you do start receiving ads in your application. So for the most part, if you don't see it straight away, just hold out and just wait a little moment. But that's simply how you can start generating interstitial ads over and over again within the app. It's pretty cool, isn't it? And if you do use your own ad unit ID, you will see different ads being displayed. This is just the test version of it. So cool. It is really, really cool. And there we go. That's the second type of ad that we can display within applications directly from AdMob. Now, the last one we're going to talk about is probably the highest earning ad that we can have uh, when it comes to displaying ads and earning revenue. And that is what's known as video ads, aka video reward ads. And basically what this means is we can trigger an action just like how we did with our interstitial. But instead of displaying an ad full screen, it starts to play a video. Now, once the video is played, we have options. We can either choose that, we let the video play, dismisses, all good, we've earned some money. Or we can turn it into a reward ad where the user has to watch the video to maybe get extra coins in their game. We've all seen those type of games before. So you can trigger actions based off the outcome of these video ads, which we'll talk all about in the next lecture.